what can I say? Small form factor TI computers would seem to have me singing their praises once again. And this time, the culprit is the TI-74 BasiCalc, a TI portable that, for me, represents the end of the line for 80s TI computers as most of us knew them. Which is to say, as systems with the TI Basic operating system in ROM, running TI applications served up on solid-state software carts. Home users saw that formula for the first time on the TI-99-4, of course, which made its debut in 1979 in a launch so messy that some folks in the TI sphere felt the need to do up these buttons in the aftermath. To have a much-needed laugh, I guess, and say, well, mistakes were made. And for most people, that TI computer story came to a merciful end in 1984, when TI finally left the home computer market. But the truth is, TI's weird in-house computer tech did stick around a lot longer than that, mainly on board TI's portables. The first of those was the TI Compact Computer 40, which I've been giving plenty of my attention to lately on this channel. That came to market in 1983, and while it was a rather cool piece of TI Basic computing tech, it did have a few issues that made getting the most out of it tough. Like a storage solution that was never released, leaving you nowhere to save your programs, and a screen that ages really, really badly, with pixels missing on most units in the long run. So the CC40 was in dire need of a hardware update that fixed what was broken and added what was missing. It was infuriatingly close to being really useful, but not quite there as sold. And for me, that's what the TI-74 represents. An update that gives you what was good about the CC40, but on hardware that's a whole lot less headache in a package that's also, incidentally, a lot more portable. So, let's take a look at that package. The first piece of which, inside the box, is an information sheet about all the upgrades you can buy for your new TI-74. In software, your options being Pascal, Statistics, Mathematics, and Finance, available third quarter 1986. Then, in Accessories, the PC324 printer, the CI7 cassette interface, and the 8K constant memory cartridge. After that, we've got the user guide, which tells you all about the build and the day-to-day -day use of your TI-74. And we've also got the Programming Reference Guide. Which is the more interesting of these two books to me, since that's where we'll find all the features of TI Basic on the TI-74 laid out. But under all of that, finally, we've got a TI-74, which you can see is stored in its clamshell case here. And if we open up the case, we've got the machine inside. With a TI Basic Quick Reference Card in the lid of the case, so examples of all the main TI Basic commands are always in view. To get a closer look, we can take the machine out of its case just by grabbing the right side, where the case has a cutout. And you can see that, as a member of TI's compact computer lineage, it really does live up to that compact computer name. As a small but mighty machine. The main external features being a contrast dial on the right side, which, unlike on the CC40, I find I tend to set well below the maximum, since, well, I guess this screen doesn't require as much encouragement to function properly at this age. 
Then on the bottom, the battery door, where you'll put four AAA batteries instead of the AA's used in the CC40. And you can see here on the underside, we've also got some tiny non-slip feet, which are happily all still around in this case. On the front of the unit, you can see that all the TI-74's key labels are painted on and color-coded, which means you'll never have to worry about losing them the way CC40 users had to worry about the CC40 keyboard overlay just falling off. And also on the front, you'll see there's the classic TI Solid State Software cartridge slot where we've got a mysterious cart labeled ROM slash RAM, which came pre-installed with the machine. And if you guessed that the ROM slash RAM cart has ROM and or RAM inside it, well, you could certainly be forgiven. But you'd be wrong. The ROM slash RAM cart, as lovely and functional as it looks, is in fact home to neither ROM nor RAM nor anything. It's just a protector for the port. For whenever you don't have a real cart plugged in, like the ones DI promised us in the pack-in materials. For really, really straightforward practical reasons, the most interesting of those expansion carts to me is easily going to be the 8K constant memory cart. Since it's hard to turn down an opportunity to double your memory. With the AdMem subprogram adding that 8K to Basic's working memory, or the put subprogram storing your current program to cartridge for later retrieval using the get subprogram. Which all sounds great, but sadly, these carts have battery backed memory on board, and as mid 80s hardware, those batteries are long dead. TI did promise an over three year service life in the manual. That doesn't quite get us to the 2020s, does it? So, just keep in mind, this is one of those cases where new in box, in principle, means repairs required. There are other things to use in that cartridge port, though, and the Learn Pascal cart is one interesting option, since another language is always nice to have. Though the Learn Pascal title for this one is a bit odd making it sound like they're not giving you something useful so much as something merely educational. But looking back, Pascal for CC40 was pretty light on features. And so when CC40 Pascal got another lease on life in the TI-74, it's no surprise the feature set looked a lot alike and the name just got an update to make it clear it wasn't so much turning Pascal into a powerful programming tool for the TI-74, as it was giving you a playpen for experimenting with the language. This is the TI-74 basic calc, after all, not the Pascal calc. It was in basic, not Pascal, that the CC40's hardware features were really exposed. Call Indic could turn screen indicators on and off. Call Care could redefine characters. and so on. So it's only natural we'd expect to find those things in TI-74 BASIC 2. But the bad news is TI-74 BASIC can't actually do these things right out of the box. Try to use these subprograms as sold and no dice. The only mercy being, there is a way to get them back. The original solution being the TI-74's PC interface which lets you load machine language programs like those onto the TI-74 from a DOS PC via parallel port. The further caveat there just being that, to use it, you need a fairly rare peripheral and an 80s era PC. But that problem too has a solution, as nowadays Peter Engels maintains TIIF2, a TI-74 interface program that runs on modern Windows, while doing everything the original software did, and a few things the original didn't. The huge selling point here for me being TIIF2's ability to tokenize and detokenize TI-74 and CC40 basic programs, right from Windows, so that it can take a TI-74 program and extract source code from that 
Or, conversely, take TI-74 basic source code you've typed up and encode it as the tokenized program ready to run on your TI-74. Plus, it comes with a pretty slick editor, with most of the core features you'd want in a TI basic editor, like automatic line numbering and renumbering on command. So, it'd be a pretty nice interface for writing your TI-74 code, even if it didn't also tokenize it for you. Though, the fact that it does is what makes it irreplaceable. And it does all of that for either the CC40 or the TI-74, as I say. So, a great tool to have for either, or for both. But especially for the TI-74, given that the PC interface software it replaces was historically the only way to load all of those CC40 TI Basic subprograms onto that machine. Though that's not entirely the case anymore. Given the load program that comes with the PC interface can actually be used from any mass storage device, and the Hexter, the modern mass storage device for CC40, can fill that niche for the TI-74 just the same. The only trick there is, the Hexter uses TI's 2x8-pin Hexbus interface, while the TI-74 uses TI's later 10-pin Dockbus interface, which, as you can see, are not at all the same thing. Physically, anyway. But it just so happens that they are effectively the same thing as far as how they talk to peripherals goes. Which is a very handy thing, since it means that hexbus devices can usually be used with dockbus just fine, and vice versa. And you'll just have to wire them up correctly. RK Chopper sells a little pinout converter which you may want to use, and you can see that here. But I ended up wiring up my own cable using DuPont jumpers since, well, that does the job perfectly well too. I just made sure to mark which side was up at both ends since, with no key on the cable like the originals would have, that's important information. With that, the Hexter's Hexbus drive is TI-74 compatible and can be used to load and save programs and, most importantly for me, load the programs that come with the TI-74 PC interface. The program that precedes all others being the load program I mentioned, which in keeping with the name is a loader for any assembly routines you want to load into memory. And in my case, the highest priority item after that is without a doubt the call care subprogram for redefining character graphics. Though another one I'm going to want to have on hand is the call index subprogram for controlling all the display indicators. With those loaded, I can run any CC40 basic program I've written on the TI-74, and expect it to be fully compatible, since that one big difference is now eliminated. And outside a few of these subroutines, their TI basic implementations are more or less identical. Though being able to run almost any CC40 basic program on TI-74 isn't just a software thing, it comes down to the most important hardware details of both machines. Namely, a 31 character wide screen with each tile consisting of 5x7 characters and a 5x1 underline. Exactly the same, functionally. But with the machines right next to each other, you can see pretty clearly one thing they don't have in common is the size of the screen. The CC40 screen is way, way bigger. And so despite being pixel for pixel the same display, Graphics for CC40 do have more actual space to work with. Plus, you can also see the keyboards are fairly different in size and layout on the two units. Though the consequences of that aren't so much for what you can run on the machine, as what you can type on it, and how easily. Which is to say, the CC40 keyboard certainly isn't the easiest keyboard to type on. But you can kind of, sort of, touch type on it, as long as your hands aren't too huge. And that is not really the case on the TI-74. With any challenges the CC40 presents as far as touch typing goes taken to the max, making it very nearly impossible. This keyboard wasn't just made for typing basic, though. As you can see, it's got a lot more calculator symbols on it than the CC40s did. 
Since, unlike the CC40, the TI-74 has a calculator mode you can switch to by pressing the Mode button. And in that mode, all your letter keys now perform their calculator functions. Which is nice, I suppose. But personally, I'm here for the coding more than the calculating. So, not really the point for me. On the coding side of things, though, another hidden difference in features that you might eventually run into if you dig deep enough into these machines is in the sound department. Since the CC40, for its part, has a beeper. And the main demonstration program in the Editor Assembler Manual even focuses on showing you how to use it. You probably won't want to, because it sounds pretty awful. But you can if you like, and not so on the TI-74, which has no beeper at all, making it a silent machine. Where the CC-40 had a voice, even if it was a painfully shrill one. But speaking of Editor Assembler, the fact that the CC40 EA cart does not have a TI-74 iteration may disappoint some folks. Since, while typing in then assembling machine language programs on a CC40 itself is a pretty bonkers thing to do, it sure has a certain novelty to it. And that isn't a novelty available on the TI-74. But for that matter, the CC40 also had a debugger built in, where you could inspect and modify memory. And that's missing on the TI-74 too. So, one more power user option for entering machine language routines directly that's been taken away. The PC interface has mostly been the solution for what's missing to this point though, and, well, this case is no different. Since with the load program it gives you, you can load assembly programs, and those include peek, poke, get, mem, and exec, as programs distributed with the PC interface package. So, with those routines available, you do actually have the means, directly accessible from the TI-74 command prompt, to reserve memory for machine language programs, poke them into memory, and execute them. If you for some reason think that's a sensible thing to do, and a good use of your time. But for me, the TI-74 basic calc is all about basic at the end of the day. Unsurprisingly, given the name, and as you saw on the CC40 in my earlier videos, it's a basic that outpaces the TI-99 basic by a lot. So, all the performance is there to get anything you could possibly want to get done in 31 characters or less. And I guess a tougher question the TI-74 faces is just, why TI-74? In a world where the CC40 has a bigger screen, and a slightly bigger keyboard, plus more basic subprograms built into ROM. And the answer there is, I'd say, all about build. Because the TI-74 is in a lot of ways a better built machine, with a nice protective case, a more portable form factor, and, most importantly, a screen that isn't prone to failure. With that last one being the biggest issue for the CC40, given most units have serious display issues and are missing pixel columns on the display these days. Whereas, no such issues for the TI-74, most units being just fine even after all these years. Plus, there are just a lot more TI-74s out there. Where the CC-40 barely made it to market and sold for less than a year, the TI-74 had a five-year lifespan with the TI-74S variant moving good numbers on the business market, as a result of which you'll see lots of units like this, with the branding of whatever corporate buyer, and sometimes whatever custom cartridge software they supplied, too. A TI-74 can't do everything a CC-40 can right out of the box, but in build quality, durability, and reliability, it absolutely does come out on top. As it should, given that it took the CC40 design and refined it however it could. Mixing in the updates the CC40 Plus prototype would have given the CC40, if TI hadn't pulled out of the computer market at the end of 83. 
So with both of these machines sitting on my desk the last few weeks, out of the two, it is the TI-74 I find myself a little more inclined to poke away at and keep right at hand. And it's definitely the one I'd be more inclined to take with me on the road, with the smaller form factor and the protective case. Once upon a time, the CI-7 cassette interface was another advantage for the TI-74, since that let the TI-74 save and load via cassette, where the CC-40 had no cassette support. But with Hexter now delivering a way more practical storage solution for both devices, there is not much point in cassette these days. Should you get a TI-74 basic calc? Well, yeah, if you're nostalgic about TI basic on the TI-99, and think the idea of a convenient little handheld based around it sounds cool. That's how I came around to appreciating this machine after all. But whether that makes sense to you or not, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the last in the line of TI's TI-99 basic computers. This one's a great little machine for what it is, and fully worth the time of any TI Basic fan, it seems to me.